I had a request from a viewer uh, to do a particular experiment. It's a, it's a pretty classic experiment in physics. Um, it has to do with charge on a uh, set of parallel plates, sort of like a Leyden jar, but um, usually measured with an electrometer and uh, the plates move. Anyway, it, it, it's a classic, uh, a classic physics experiment, and we can do one here. And it's a, a bit, uh, a bit more up to our speed here for for the shop. So um, we need to know an equation here. Uh, Q equals CV. So charge is in Q. Charge is in coulombs. So you measure charge in coulombs, and that's the number of electrons you've got. Um, and then uh, that equals uh, a capacitance measured in farads, so we're all familiar with capacitors, uh, times voltage in volts, okay? Or most of the time we look at it as uh, volts equals uh, charge over, over uh, capacitance, right? So if the capacitor goes up, the voltage goes uh, down, and if the capacitance goes down, the voltage goes up, okay? Or if the charge goes up, the voltage goes up. If the charge goes down, the voltage goes down, right? So, so that all makes sense. And um, so what we can do is we can do an experiment where we have, um, this is this charge, and we can have a, a, a starting condition where we have a fixed charge, we have a fixed charge and then we can vary the capacitance. We can change the capacitance, and we should see a change in voltage, okay? So if you have a change in capacitance, you should have a change in voltage. Um, so let's go ahead and do that. All right, so we've seen this experiment before. Uh, we put capacitors inside the little box here, and then we measured their voltage, and we watched uh, the voltage change with time, uh, whether it was due to leakage or some chemical imbalance in the uh, in the device, uh, the voltage will change. The question though, what happens if the capacitance changes? Does the voltage change? We saw that in the equation. If the capacitor changes, the voltage should change. So I have a variable capacitor here, so we can change, we can change the uh, uh, change the capacitance. But let's do what we did before. Let's let's charge it up. Let's put the nine and a half volts on it. Okay, so there we have, we have nine and a half volts on it. And uh, it's pretty stable because air doesn't really leak much. So it's pretty stable. And uh, I have a plastic knob on it. Now, when I come close to it, there might be some charge in the air. And so the, the voltage might change a bit. Uh, not really. Okay, now I'm gonna change the capacitance. And look at the voltage rise. So I, I can make it go to 36 volts. So we start with a large, all of the blades were in the uh, variable capacitor. And we had about nine volts in it. And that's about, I think it was around 600 picofarads. I think I measured this capacitor around 600 picofarads. And so then we're gonna make that capacitance smaller and smaller and smaller by removing the plates so there's uh, less and less area of plates and the voltage goes up. It's a really, really cool experiment. I like it. All right, so another interesting thing that, uh, that I noticed was because this was out in the, uh, out in the open. Um, let's go ahead and uh, I'm going to reach in here and I'm going to ground, ground the two. I touched the two plates and I can, I can kind of zero it out. So we have kind of have zero volts here, okay? And we can say, oh, well, if I get my hand near it, maybe I pick up the 60 hertz from the room or something like that. So here's a, a, a steel, a uh, piece of steel, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna wave it over the capacitor here, and you can see it doesn't really do anything, okay? Uh, now I'm gonna do it with this screwdriver. Now the screwdriver's made out of plastic, so if I rub it on my arm, and then I bring it near, look at that, look at the voltage go up and the voltage goes back down as I remove it, okay? And that's because there is charge on, on this plastic. And as I bring it near this capacitor, that charge uh, is seen by the capacitor, uh, 
and then if I let it go, it follows, it follows it. I'm not, I'm not able to, I'm not able to transfer the charge yet. I don't, it's been a long time since I've taken physics. I don't remember exactly how to uh, transfer the charge. I think you have to do a two-step project process. You have to like make something in contact and then ground it and then you pick it away. There's a whole rigmarole to, to transfer charge and I just don't remember how to do it. But anyway, I thought it was interesting to to uh, get this near. Now if I take this plastic and I and I kind of hold it and I try to rub all the charge off of it, okay, and then I come back over. You see, it doesn't do anything. It's not doing anything. It's when I rub it on my fur <laughs> Uh, that you get the charge. And so that's the triboelectric. Uh, you get a, a charge transfer by rubbing things together, believe it or not. And uh, yeah, we can, we can see it there. So anyway, that's the physics experiment for the day.